And a very good morning and welcome to this, the first of a few videos that I hope to be doing for the Daily Punt where we're going to take a look at some of the bigger races over the Christmas period. Um, starting today with a, a sort of brief look, a five minute look if you like, at the King George to be taking place on Boxing Day at Kempton as per usual. Um, we kick off with Mike Bite at the head of the market, six to four, with the general sort of price at the moment, 11 to eight. For Nicky Henderson, very hard to knock. Mike Bite would have been the winner of his last six. Were it not for an unfortunate fall in the Cato Star on this day last year when he was best part of some 20 lengths clear and Daryl Jacob took a lot of the flack for that. Um, sort of asking him to do a bit too much at the last um, when he didn't need to, but you know, knowing what we know now about Mike Byton events since he, he can stick the brakes on so I don't think you can be really um too hard on Daryl Jacob for wanting to try and keep him up to his work. It was just an unfortunate incident I think. Um yes we have seen him since then do his very best to throw the RSA away by lugging out to his right at Cheltenham after the last not the first time he's done that, I would hasten to add. I think it's just Cheltenham that he seems to have a, a major issue with. He did it in a um a handicap hurdle there back in the day as well. He sort of went to his right after the last there too. So there's obviously something at Cheltenham that catches his attention after the last. As far as this race goes, I mean, it's it's rather tailor-made for him. He ticks just about every box you're looking for in terms of um, trip, track, ground. Comes into this in, in good form after a fairly bloodless win in his warm-up at Kempton back in November. A lot weren't impressed with that, but I think he'll come on plenty for it and he could do no more than win. He's a solid favourite at, at the price. Um, but 11 to 8, you know, I can look elsewhere. Bristol de Mai, um, much improved this season. A lot of people are saying that he needs heavy ground. I don't believe he needs heavy ground at all. He just needs some cut in the ground, which he will get. So as far as the ground goes, I haven't got a problem. As far as the track goes, that's where I have a bit more of an issue because um, Bristol de Mai seems to make his ground up in the air. And if they're taking him off his feet a little bit on Boxing Day, then he might his jumping may just suffer. As a result, in, and as such, I think he may find one or two of these just a little bit too quick for him. I still think it will remain interesting for the Gold Cup, as long as you get a bit of rain in the week beforehand, and that's an unlikely scenario, I know. But you know, should it rain the week before, I think Bristol and I would still come into the Gold Cup reckoning whatever he does today. Um, this will crack. I cannot have. Um, I think the Newbury effort, as much as they were looking for excuses afterwards, was. Not good. I think we've seen. I think his best days are behind him now. I'm afraid, sadly. Um, Ruby Wall. I, I I appreciate that a lot of people said he was very big in the paddock at, at Newbury, but I'm not buying that too much because he was very big in the paddock at Chepstow the year before as well for his first run, and he just ran away from them there. Um, I was lucky enough to be in the paddock that day at Chepstow. I was. I got pretty close up to him, and there wasn't. There wasn't a lot of rib cage on him that day. Um, you knew he would come on, so I'm not buying that. I just feel now that you know the injury has has taken its toll, and I'm happy to be proved wrong. But I certainly won't be backing him at six to one. Um, Fox Norton, similarly, I think this is just the wrong race for him. I still think he's a champion chase contender, a big champion chase contender as well. He's so much happier going left handed on good ground. Um, you only got to sort of look at the round of jumping he put in against Politolog last time to sort of see that he's. I just think he meets them on a better stride left-handed than he does going right-handed. So I don't see this being his race at all. Um, Whisper, you can make a case for Whisper at around about 10, 12 to 1 if Mike Bites a 6 to 4 chance given there is little between them on RSA form. And he too is an improved horse this season after his second in the, um, the not the Hennessy, the Labrooks Gold Trophy or whatever they're calling it this week. Um, he too has got form at Kempton. He's he's had a couple of runs where one he's looked happy and one less so. But there is certainly a case to be made at ten to one um, for Whisper. Disco, if he turns up here, would be quite interesting, and I think he'll go off probably about half the price that he is at the moment. If he does, he's a sixteen to one chance. It's probably worth bearing in mind he did miss his prep for this um, because he was lame. But take that that aside, he looks like an improving horse that jumps really well. I think the track will suit him being a bit of a front runner and he'll be prominent throughout. And if you do look at that, that JLT form now, it looks a lot better than perhaps it did at the time. The, the horses around him have all gone on and done well since. So if he turns up for this, um, he'd, be, he'd be a runner in my book. He really would. Um, I certainly wouldn't be uh, discounting him. 
Uh, one that I would be discounting whether he turns up or not is is Jack Adam. I think again, best days are behind him now. Don't see this as his thing. T for two. There's been a case made to me for T for two when I was sort of discussing this race. You know, he did he did run well in this last year and was probably the second best horse behind Thistlecrack. If, he, if he'd been ridden for second, he would have been a clear second. And he did did run okay at Haydock against. Bristol to mine until he quite simply got exhausted in that ground. This is more his thing. 25 to 1, there is a case to be made for T for 2, and he could probably hit the frame if this race cuts up, which it's, it's likely to do. So, again, at 25 to 1, can't be discounting him. Top notch probably won't run here, and then you're into some outsiders that I don't really give much of a squeak to. You can make a very minor case for double shuffle hitting the frame at 66. If he can run to his bet bright form, he's probably capable of running to sort of mid 150s and Kempton three mile on good ground is his thing. Um, but the race would have to cut up pretty badly. But, but nevertheless, 66 to 1, you know, if, if we get if we're down to sort of six runners on the day, he won't be 66 and we, he'll be a 25 chump. And then you've only really got to beat a few home to, to get it in the frame. I think the, the bet for me at the moment um, would probably be a little bit each way T for two and a little bit each way on disco but as I say if you're one of these that's anti-post betting is just so fraught with danger these days we don't know what's going to be turning up and what's not but they'd be my two against the field at the prices I think at this stage best of luck with all your selections I'll be back with a preview of the Welsh Grand National later on in the week thanks guys <laughs>